say that uh, the Achsan Yisrael Torah of Godesman is the Rosh Yeshiva of the Yeshiva Mishamayim al Aretz, bringing people from all ends of the world through together through the airwaves in Shemayim al Aretz. It brings us, it brings everyone together. I hear so much from my father, Lozang Gazun, about the, the Cheshivas of all the Shurim, Ayyim Bi Yayme, Tminim Kesidram, and how much he gains from them. Wanted to say something else. Rav as, as you've many times heard, my father said they said, said over on the Shurim how Rav Gadsman brought out a chilek of Yeshurim, brings out all the chalak of Yeshurim, but this special chilek of Yeshurim was brought out to be mefarsing the Torah of Mary Virabi, the Rashiva of David, and Halevi Salvechik, Zechrein of the that we're coming to say the Rezi for. And I want to tell you that Rav Gadsman, you were Zechad to be Mekayim a mitzvah. Which mitzvah? Mitzvah the Kayim Divrayames. The mitzvah to be Mekayim the Dvarim of the Rashiva Zatzal. There were several times on many occasions I could say that I heard from the Rashiva Zatzal how he wished that there were Talmidim who would give out their Ksavim of the various other Shiram that he said, aside from the Shiram on Kachim which were printed, which many of us had a yad in that they, our, some of them were given over, that they should be printed. But aside from the shurim and kachim, the rishivas of Tzal said many, many other shurim and all different mixes of shas. And he said many times, halavai, halavai, the Talmidim would give out their tzavim so that I should be saying that my, my shurim and other mesechtas should be able to be printed. I wanted to say that with, it's not only the Zechia that you brought out, the Sefer, that gives us so many Ksavim, that so many Shiurim, you together with Rav Altuski put hours and, and days and weeks and nights and months to make sure that we came out with the Shiurim. And I understand that, Mir Tzashem, you're planning on bringing out another Chelek, to be inviter, the Tzavol, the Rishiva, to give over his Torah, to continue his Torah. But you've created an, an ability for many, many, many hundreds and maybe thousands of people to become Talmidim of the Rishima, even though they weren't Zeche, to be in the Kaisley Beis HaMedrish of the Rishima Zetzal. There are many occasions when the Rishima asked me if people use the Svarim. And I told him that yes, when I go in different places, I find in many different locations, people tell me how they use the Svarim and how worthwhile the Svarim are and how they learn the Kachim the Arim of Seder of Kachim, specifically with the Ksavim of the Rashivas that's on the Shurim. And they've become, like Rav Gadsman told me today, they've become Talmidim of the Rashiva through a Shurim. I told the Rashiva once that I wanted to tell the Rashiva to uh, the kid we were trying to give over the importance of the Shurim to the Velt. How um, I said, we can Farstone, we could imagine. Lachem of Asrim of the Rishima when the Rishima would be Nisbakish, the Yeshiva Shemaya. This I was talking by Chayyim a few years before he was Nifter when the Rishima would be Nisbakish, the Yeshiva Shemaya. They will come out to meet him, the Nishamas of all the Talmidim that he created throughout the years. And he, there will be many hundreds and thousands of Talmidim which are going to come out to greet him. Talmidim from over 60, 65 years. As they wrote on the Maseva, the Karav with Shishu Mechamei Shonim, Karav to 65 years of Talmidim. I said, but in the Rashiva's fashion, he's going to look around at all the different Talmidim that are coming to greet him. And he's going to see in, there, in the crowd many Talmidim that he doesn't recognize. Many Talmidim who he would say, I never met you. And I, I said in the Rashiva's fashion, I could just imagine he would say, you I know. I know. I I don't know you. How you might tell me? Just imagine going through the crowd as such and saying the on each and every one. I don't know you. I know you came into Yishim. You didn't come to Yishim. Where are you? From my Where do I know you from? And the answer to the question is: These are the Talmidim that the Rishim created through his Shurim, through the Svarim that were given over him that were given over and now printed. So now that we have another big chilek of the Rashiva Shiurim, and we're hoping to be to many, many, many more Shiurim 
that we're going to give out over the Tkufa is that people will be able to be Nana. We may have be Nana for the Torah that the Rashiva said. To be give it to give a little background. I was once in the house by the Rashiva's itself, the Rukhaib Amas 28, and there, there was a Balbus who was there visiting from America. And I was waiting in the hallway. I was probably on my way to bring the Rashiva somewhere. And I was waiting in the hallway for the Rashiva to finish with the Balbus. And the Balbus asked the Rashiva. You know, the Kilo, the Rashiva didn't know. You know, they're joking Swarm and the Rashiva's not many. He thought it was some interesting thing that they're printing Swarm from the Rashiva. Everyone knows the Dikonis of Base Chris. They would print Swarm Stamazai. So they asked him, he asked him, is that is that Taka true? Did the Rashiva have a no for them? So she was said over the, the following statement. He said, when by Mantata went by the Briskorov, the Swarm came out from the Briskorov. The stencil came out, not the swarm that the briskerov printed. The stencil came out from the briskerov. The tatling went firing cast of them. The, 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 rov, the briskerov was very upset about them. He you know, wasn't in the sheet of risk to bring out such things. Later he had an off from them. Later he was able to accept it and he felt it was a good result. I'm the same. Mitchilam and Zaraiz and Machmen fire and cast. Originally, when they were out, when they were produced, I was upset about that. I thought it didn't come out with the same daikonis of the shear that the Rashima himself gave over. However, now that I see that how much before some it is, he has been defeated. And then the Rashima understood in his in his achrayis to be Milami Lama he saw Torah to be Milami to the Eden Torah. That it was that it was his achrayis that he should give over the Torah, not only of his own Torah, but the Torah of his Torah, Rav Chaim and Beis Halevi and Vlamaylo Imanu, the Torah of his Zedas and Elders, uh, his father is Zed and his Elder Zeda, that they gave us some mahalach and limud throughout the Shas and everywhere that we learn, they gave us some mahalach and limud. It was his achrayis to do so, and that Mimela, he was said that the Svarim are his ability to reach a much greater crowd, a much wider spectrum of people in order to be influ- influence them and give them over the Torah that he was Mechabom from, from his father and, and his grandfather, etc. So we have the Gvaldi of Zchus, and I think Rav Keller mentioned it before, that we all have the opportunity to become attached to the to the Doris of the of the Rashivas itself and the Briskarov and Rab Chaim, we all have this ability through learning the Torah to become a, a, a link in the chain to continue on the Mesaira that he was he gave from his father. One by one of the Shevra Brachis, or Pinchas Broyer, a Rashiva in Far Hasidim, he sat over a Sefarnai and Parshas Vaira. That is very apropos for the Rishiva Zetzal. He said over, then the Svarna and Parsha Svarna, it says, how many years Levi lived? So the question is, what is the significance of knowing how, how long Levi lived? It says the Svarna, Levi was Herich Yomim al Kulam. Levi was Meirich Yomim and all of his other brothers. So Levi was Megadol, the next generation, and the generation after them. And so to Kairach and Amram, you want to know the source of where Moshe, Aram, and Miriam came out? It was from the fact that Levi was Megadol then. That Levi brought them up. That Levi was Marich Yomim Al Kulam in order to give them that chinuf. So in the same fashion, we can say on the Rishiva Zetzal was Marich Yomim Mikulam. He was Marich Yomim on all of his brothers, all the other the progeny, and at least from the boys of the of the Briskarov. He was there to give over the Messiah of his father, to give over the great Messiah of his father. Last night in the Espedim in Yeshiva. Or Yitzchak Lichtenstein, the Rashiva Torah Da said that the reason why he was to give over this Torah from his father was due to his great his battles to his father, his hachna, how he was an onav, he completely was mevato himself to his father, and therefore I thought of a marshal 
when you grab something into a tree, so the new leaf, the new leaf, the new bud, the new branch becomes part of the tree because it becomes tuffel, it's bottle, it's part and parcel totally of the big tree. So to the Rashidas itself, of course, he was an offshoot. But the, the point of the matter is, if he was totally mevato himself to his father, therefore he was Zaycha, to be able to be the, the one who gave over the Messiah his father for many, many, many years after others were already nifter. And that was the Gvaldigus Chus that we had, the Rashidas that saw in our midst, the Bra Kara the Avua, the, the son who was the offshoot of his father to give us over the Messiah of the Miskrov, he lived it. When he, when he went over Briskorov, we felt like we had the Briskorov by us, the fire and the, the amkus and the depth and the clarity that he had from the Briskorov. He once told me as we were walking out of the Yeshiva of Grossberg in Yerushalayim, he once told me, he says, oh, listen, he told me, the Rav gave Shir at night, 7, 7.30-ish, and after the Shir, not Bishas the Shir, definitely not during the Shir, but after the Shir, he sat and he has it over the Shir, and then he wrote over in his notebook the notes from the, risk, from the Shir of the Risk Rav. Then, and this is something that was hard for me to even imagine how someone could pass and survive such a, as such a, you know, such a test. Then the Briskorov used to go over it. The, uh, the next morning, the Briskorov used to go over his notes and his half love and his notebooks to see if they were correct, and he would make corrections on them. He would make corrections on them to make sure that it was with the Daikonos of Beis Chris that the Rashidus Tzal would be able to give over the Messiah. And it was with these notebooks that the Rashidus Tzal prepared the Shiurim that he set over the term of the Briskorov, the Daikonos that the Briskorov put in. And it was this vision of the Bishkarov that the, that the, the Rishimu Zetzal was going to be there to give over his Torah, the Dairi Dairis, for many, many years to come. Many, many, many years that he was married Yom Malkulam, that the Bishkarov put the effort to make sure that the notebooks were there with Daikonis, with, with exactitude, so that the Rishimu Zetzal could give over that Torah. The Rishimu was Zeche due to the fact that he was Machni himself to his father. Said a story last night, it's a famous story. When the Rashid Zitzal got married, so he got from, from the, his wife or from his mother in law the, the, a, a golden azager, a, a, a gold watch. And they used to have in those days what was called a tashzager, a pocket watch. A gold watch that was a pocket watch. When the Biskrov saw him with the pocket watch after, a, after he got it, so the Biskrov said, Thus is this tribe. This is not for you. A little watch is not for you. The Rishima never took it out again. Put it on the shelf and he never used it. Now I can be made that the Rishima had a, a watch. The watch was the, without the band because he didn't wear it on his hand. He put it in his pocket. Whenever we went on a long trip, he would take it along to make sure that he knew what time it was. But the Maisa was is that the Rishima never asked his father why not. Never asked his father why not. If his father said that that wasn't for him, then his father understood that this wasn't for the Rashidus and Sal, and he did, and he put it away. Another story he said was this, that the, the Briskorov used to wash Natil Sidaim by his bed, and for some reason, which no one knows, the Briskorov told the, the, the Rashidus and Sal, does this this right? This humra of making sure that the water is by your bed is not for you, and he never did it again. Never asked his father why if Briskorov held that this chumr was not for him. He didn't do it. Of course, everyone has to know a pshat, and I'm not saying that this is the way we should be named the rabbin. But the point of the matter was, is his father said his father, when his father said something was Kedosh Kedoshim, and maybe never asked any questions. And that was the reason why he was Zeche, to be able to continue to the Mesera, to give over the learning that he got from his father due to his Hispatos. Said over last night that it's Mavur and Shulchan Aruch that a person could give the Hespadim of Yud Beis Chaydish, they could give it even within Shleshim Yom Kayim Lachad, even during the 30 days preceding a Yom Tiv. You know, we don't have Hespad. The Mavarshim bring down, the, the Nesikalim bring down the Siba is because it's after the Yud Beis Chaydish. It's right after you finish Yud Beis Chaydish. You're already out of the time period of Avelis. Since one is left time period of Avelis, 
Therefore, he's now he's in a different frame of mind. It's not a frame of being sad, but rather it's a, a frame of, it's a happier frame of mind. So he, he said, so in came what's talking to Chad that we have such as paid him. He said because like of color, she was tells mention that that if there's a zero alamishi shakach minale. There's a zero on a, on a person who is nifter that he should be he should be forgotten. So now that we come to the Yubes Chayish when it's this period when the Rebbeinu Shem said we're going to forget him, now we have to have the Rishi Karin to remember him and to remember him and to be able to live by the things that he taught us. I said by the cover this morning, the Rishi was in Saul's his son-in-law is Aiden from Nehemiah Agoyim from Nehemiah Kaplan said that he has a kashim zero alameishi shtakach min aleiv, but all the Talmudim are busy saying over his Torah. That it's it's Lebanon. It's Lebanon. It's like we feel like Yeshiva is still with his terror. We still alive. We still feel him here. I want to answer the question, and would this give us a a, a lesson? What we're supposed to be doing in the in the coming in the coming time period? The Gemara and Brachas tells us Sadikim Afilubim Misasan Shlekuyim Chayim. Even while they're after their nifter, their Kari Chayim. The Gemara learns it out of a pasuk from Ben Yo Ben Yehuda Ben Ishchai. So says the Gemara Ben Ishchai. All to cool him. Alma Ben Mesi Nino. What everyone else who was walking around is dead. And Dafka Ben Yo Ben Yehuda is Ben Ishchai. Says the Gemara. No, Elamai because Ben Ben Yo Ben Yehuda even Ben Misasa was Kari Chai. Even Ben Misasa is Kari Chai. The Gemara explains what was so great about the Yob and Yoyada, Shariba, the Kimets, Poilim, Litario. He got together many Pe'ilim, many people, Poilim, to go out and to spread the Torah. That was, he was Mechabet's Talmidim Arabe. And therefore, Bimbi Sosa, he was Chayim. The Ain explains the Gemara, an um, amazing thing. He says, he says, by tzaddikim, the iker of their chayim is nitzchias. When they're alive in this world, what are they living for? What are they living for? For nitzchias, for elam haba, v'loi chayish olam hazeh. And not today's day, the, the world of today. L'kach oedim es Hashem v'chol libam, v'yilahem chayim nitzchim. So they have chayim forever. M'ash enkin rishayim, that they're worried about the elam hazeh. So I was thinking, Enochinami, a mace is Yishtakach min aleim. The part of Misa, the part of the Gashmias, the Olam Hazet, that's Yishtakach min aleim. The connection of, with the Rishiva that was not in Inyane, the Olam Hapa, that was Yishtakach min aleim. But the Chiyos of the Rishiva is Nitzchias. The Chay Olam Hapa that we gained from the Rishiva Zetzal and the Limit Atera. That high Elam Habo, that we that is that's forever. That's Sadiqim Misasa Kriam Chaim. The same Chiyas that he had when he was alive is continuing on the Dere Deris. So that's the message to us. We have to keep up the Chiyas that the Rashidus and Sal had Bechayov and continue it on. In the Sheet of Brisk, everyone knows you want to, we have to, if we, if we had one way to define one Nakuda. To define the Rishivas itself, that from there we can understand, understand the axis that everything revolved upon, that everything, re- the nucleus, that everything else revolved upon. So I once heard from a, a Misharis, Rav Chasko Abramsky, who told the Rishivas itself, that Rav Chasko Abramsky used to explain that the Yisrael of Brisk is So uncle and some poop. And in English, I think you would say it's to get to, to hit the bullseye. The you say the brisk is you say the brisk is that that a person that they were always able to get the svara to get the nakuda exactly exactly like it had to be. That was the you say the brisk. And in Mela, when if we want to get to the nakuda, that if with this Nakuda, maybe we can understand and we'll try to explain uh, 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 quite a few stories about the Rishiva that everything evolved upon. I think it's very auspicious that the Rishiva itself was Nifter in the week of Parshas Yisrael. Parshas Yisrael, Kabbalah Satira, Pa Yisrael said before Kabbalah Satira, Nasev and Ishma, 
in the famous Gemara that says that the Malachim came down and the Malachim came down and gave Kais or took Sarin that they said Nasa Vinishma. So there's many, there's a few different Chatim that the Rishim used to say over from the Beis Halevi about the godless of the fact that Klaus was mocked in Nasel and Ishma. One of the Chatim the Beis Halevi in Shaila Sechuva says that the Beis Halevi explains that the Chur is the Chakasha. How can Klaus say Nasa before Nishma? If they don't know what they're being the Kabbalah, how could they make a Kabbalah? The Ramam Paskins, that if someone makes a Kabbalah, to, that's unlimited, like a blank check. I'm a Kabbalah to do whatever you want, then it's not a Kabbalah. He's not in the Schail of Piyadin. So, Frank the Beis Levi, he says he heard the Kash from others. So, how could when Kaisal make the Kabbalah of Nasim and Nishma? Says the Beis Levi, but there's a different way. There's a way of becoming an Evid. If a person is sold as an Evid to the Oven, then he's Mukhuiv to do whatever the Oven wants. Klau Yisrael became Abde Hashem. Klau Yisrael became Avodim Tar Kaddish Baruch Hu. And it was through becoming Avodim Tar Kaddish Baruch Hu, that's how Klau Yisrael became with Mechabal Nasa before the Nishma. And he goes on to explain the Gemara and Shabbos over there, which you're not gonna, we're not going to get involved in right now. But the point of the matter is, the Yisrael of it is being an Evan Hashem. Being an Evan Hashem, that's the Nekudo. That is the Nekuda. With that, we can understand with everything that the Rishima did. It was all a cheshmer of being an Ebed Hashem. Many people have probably asked, you know, the, the risk is the shita being machmer. Being machmer, which also had its boundaries. Like we saw from the Maisa with the Rishima and Salam, the Pistorov. Not everything has, everything has its time and place and not everything needs to be done. And the, and the Rimeir used to, the, the Rishima's brother used to say over from Chaim, that just like there's a deed of what to do, there's deed of what not to do. That's part of that's part of Yiddishkeit also is to know what not to do, which chumas to take on, which chumas not to do. So the the the, the Rishi Zatzal and everything that he did was for Ois Kichesh, was Kichesh, and with doing being an Abdul Hashem, I was being a Machmir. This Abdus was not an Abdus with oil. Because I'll tell us, Evan Melech Melech, an Evan of a Melech is like a Melech himself. Why is an Ebed of a Melech like a Melech himself? Because it's a whole Hashivas to be the Ebed of a Melech. Who gets to see the king the most? The Ebed of Melech. He's inside the, being Mishari's the Melech daily. The Sarma will see him even less than the Ebed of Melech. Ebed of Melech has a, a special um, ability to be able to go enter, to be able to enter to see the king daily. He wears special clothing. It's a whole Hashivas. Being machmer is a chashivus because it gives you the ability to be an evan hamela, to be an evan for our kaddish baruch Hu. If everything you do is for our kaddish baruch Hu, it's a chashivus, it's a gishma, it's meridi, it's mamish leelu leelu, and that's how the rishus and some lived his whole life. Everything was a cheshbin al piderech atira. What is the terror telling me to do now? The terror was first, the terror was second, the terror was third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Till the end, there was no such thing as the Torah being first and I'm being second. Rabbi Yitzchak Lichtenstein, Rishiva Torah Das, explained yesterday, most people have their Seder Ayayim, and then they fit in their Torah and Avoida around their Seder Ayayim, whatever their Seder Ayayim is, so then they make sure that they get a Chakras in, and they get a Mimchen, and a Mayrif, etc. But the Rishiva, everything ran around the, the, what, the opposite. Everything was revolving around what he had to do for our Kaddish Baruch Hu and his Seder Ayyim. And, th- and that was very important to him, his Seder Ayyim. I'll tell you a story that happened towards the end of the Rishiva's life. He had a condition that made it that he, he was losing his copious amount, not, not losing, but his body wasn't generating enough blood and he was getting weaker and weaker because his blood supply wasn't enough. So there were several times that we had to take him to the hospital in order to get a blood transfusion. Get a blood transfusion. Now, and if you know the Seder in the hospital in Eretz Yisrael, a blood transfusion has to be done in the morning. That's the only time they did it. And even with all of our protexias and protections and people that we had inside the various hospitals trying to help us out, but there's rules and regs and you have to come early in the morning in order to get there. And as much as we got a private room for him, etc. But they have to get there early in the morning. So when we were hesitating what time we were going to go to the hospital, the Shiva first started with chakras. And then it was a question of 
if he, he was going to be able to eat or wasn't able to eat. But the question was, what time is Shachris? Can't leave before he finished Shachris. And Shachris isn't a 15-minute process and a 20-minute process. Isn't a half hour to an hour. Even though there, she was diving in his house, Shachris was at least an hour or more on a daily basis. His Shachris and Nefesh could be a half hour of Shemin and the male of the Rashiva's day, as much as was Pikuach Nefashas and he needed, but he had Kotos, please find another five minutes that we could come another five minutes late. Have Ashpan and then I could come a little bit later so you can accomplish davening like Visa Dapsan, like it had to be. He would eat later while he was in the hospital. We brought food for him. But the point of the matter was his Seder Ayoim and everything was Eiski Cheshmer, was calculated, was calculated by what he needed to do for Avoid Hashem. That was just one example. His Torah, his Amelus by Torah. Not only do we speak about how much he put into the shirm of his father, but he used to say over that there were some of them in Hagim of, of not the actual men Hagim that they, uh, the daily men Hagim, of course, through Shuz and Sal was well aware of. However, there were some other men Hagim that were done in, in Bris that the Rav had, had a certain Kabbalah's. And the, the, uh, so, she was brother of Meir Zetzal used to discuss it very often with the Biskarov. However, the, the she was Zetzal spent all of his time sitting and learning by a smaller rabble. And whereas the Biskarov would spend some time with her mayor going over certain analogies by supper, the she was Zetzal made sure that he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't there for supper at the time of the Biskarov. He explained if the Biskarov was eating supper and he was there at the time of the Biskarov, then he held it as a chutzpah at the bench before his father and leave. So the Melo, he would stay till the end of the meal, however long it took. But if he actually accomplished that he ate the meal beforehand and he left before the risk of then he would go back to the base of matters. So many times you make sure that his sister, Livsha, Rebson, who became Rebson Feinstein, would make sure that the meal was ready for him early so that he could go ahead and eat before his father, not for care because he was mechabed his father so much. Because Mechavit his father so much, but on the other hand, Torah to him was the Iker. What he wanted to gain out of his father was the Biskarov's Torah. And in fact, like I said to many people, besides Amav, when he had limited energy and he wasn't able to give the same shiurim that he gave throughout the years, the verklach that he said over were the verklach of his father. He felt more important to give over the verklach of the Biskarov than to say over his own Torah. His avoidah, his ishtabchus anefesh, his tefillah. God has been mentioned this morning the story about a person who disturbed him in the middle of davening. He said he lost the whole davening. And that was the way it went. Play another story about davening. We were in the hospital one time getting a procedure done. And then as we were leaving the hospital, the Rashiva asked me, what time is it? I am going home to go home to daven mincha. So I told him what time it was and what time the shki was. And it was at least an hour plus, an hour, 15, hour, 20 minutes before the shkiel. But I'm telling you that trip home, he was literally, I, I could have said he was pushing the car almost. He was literally pushing me to every stop to keep on going, keep on going. It's about, about the shkiel. It's soon going to be shkiel. Why? Because the Rishis itself had a minnow that he would, would put on fill in. By Mincha, and he had to get home in enough time to put on the tefillin and to daven menucha sanefesh, mishabchu sanefesh, mimamakim krosicha. That's the way he daven. Every tefillah was a tefillah. Every tefillah he concentrated on and did it to his fullest. Then there was a, there, there was the aspect of the Rishis itself that he was a good mochesed. How his concern for the other person, his concern for everyone else. And his concern for the Rebbitzin, I remember as the one time when the Rebbitzin fell, so she fell and she was lying in bed. And we as Talmudim didn't know, like, we should go visit her, we shouldn't go visit her. Is it proper? Is it not proper? So we like looked at the Rashiva and he says, Avada, Avada, go be Mavakachal the Rebbitzin. And he was concerned that the Rebbitzin should feel that the Talmudim, who she cared about, so much and how much she did for the, the yeshiva, they sh she should get beaker chaylam by the talmidim of the yeshiva. And we talk to her and her. And, and in general, the yeshiva was concerned about her. The Rebbeinson told me many times how much the yeshiva really cared for her. And he was concerned for her to say to her, Arif Yomtev, here's some money. Go buy something for Yomtev. 
So she said, even though there's shoes, I said, I eat Kenish gain, I can't go to a lady's clothing store, but here's money, go buy something for Yomtif. Said she didn't need anything, and she was about it. They lived with Mamish the Pashte Pashtason, but there, she was concerned for her in every single orphan. Heard a Murdika story just yesterday. Someone told me over that there were cousins from the Rebbitson side, from the Sternbuch side, who lived in England, who had an apartment in the center of town of Yerushalayim. And they came to Yerushalayim. This might have happened about 30 some odd years ago. They came to Yerushalayim, and while they were in Yerushalayim, the Rebbitson went to go visit them. Fine, she spent some time with them, maybe even an hour. And she, and she left. These people were wealthy, well, well-to-do people. So they offered the rabbits, and instead of taking home a, a taxi, she could take home a, a, instead of taking home a bus, going by bus, take a taxi, and they'll pay for it. Says, no, no, I don't want to take a bus. Well, they walked her out. They walked her out, and, and they come to the bus stop, and they see their shoes and salas there, waiting for her by the bus stop. They asked her, she was out. why don't you come in? We're cousins. She so said that that's them. And my whole day is for Newman with learning, with preparing the shirm and everything. But I didn't want the rabbit to go by herself. So we evidently took the bus with the rabbit in, waited by the bus stop as long as they were there. In the meantime, he probably was sitting and thinking and learning the whole time. And when he, she came back, he would escorted her back. But there were there's such care for the Rebbitson that he gave him from his time, which everyone knew how precious it was to him. His care for the Rebbitson, that is those designed to zoom to start, that she should live on man master him, she, that she should be taken care of, that she, when she's going to the middle of the town, she should have someone escorting her. It was an unbelievable story. There were other pulas that the Rebbitson used to do in her house. She ran a gemach. Everything the Rishiva really stood behind her. And he was maybe controlling things from behind the curtains, behind the scenes. But the Rishim, it, it was all his askama that through the rabbits and he was able to meet Mekayim, other in Yadam of Gemilas Chasadim. The time is late, and we can maybe speak for hours and hours, but I wanted to say one, one other Indian of Espedim at Yud Beis Chaydish. It's Halach and Shulchan Aruch, and Yeridea Simen Shin Dalamem, at the end of the Simen, it says that there's Halach and it's, Actually, the Allah in the beginning of the Allah is talking about a Chacham Aluf Vidoy. says the Yishon Aruch that first it speaks about the Halachas of being Masfer, a Chacham Aluf Vidoy. And then the Shulchan Aruch says that we're, we visit the Kever we visit the Kever on Yom Zion, the end of Shiva, the Chem Yom Shleishim, and on Shleishim, the Tachos Yom Shleishim Mevakram. And at the end of the third Yubei Shayish, you also go to the cavern. That's what we're kind today, by going up to the cavern in Har The question is, what is the importance of being Mavakir specifically after Shiva, after Shleshim, and after Yubei Shayish? So, of course, there's an importance mitzad the Nifter, and these in Yanam, we don't have, maybe I don't have a mus again, but mitzad ourselves, there's a certain aspect of remembering the Nifter and how he, in his Shavuah and his week, or she was in South scheduled for his week, how everything was Eskirach, and Sunday he had two shear, and Monday had one shear, but on Monday nights he would go to the Kaisal. He went to the Kaisal to Daven once a week. That's how he's Mekayim going to the, the Daven by the Kaisal. There were other times they would go, but he went to Kvias until Mamish Mesayv Yomov, he went to Kvias. On, on Monday nights at Kaisel. Tuesday there was two shirim. Wednesday there was one shir, but then a lot of times he would make make other tzorche, tzorchen that he had to do was Wednesday night, Thursday was two shirim. Arab Shabbos Kodesh. What was Arab Shabbos Kodesh? The first thing was, he went to Yeshiva, he came to Yeshiva, and the schuss of taking him to at Besef Yoma when he was shver for him, when he was close kaiches. What did he do? He came to the yeshiva in the morning to be mechazik to him to make sure that Friday Seder will be a Seder also. Friday was a day like any other. And then, as it was getting a little bit later, we would tell me, Chuck, we have to go home. It's about Chatzais, about Shabbos. It's almost Shabbos. But the yeshiva the wasn't coming into Shabbos at the last minute. There was, the pressure was before Chatzais, because by the time two hours or three hours before the Shabbos, she was done. He was ready and waiting, like it says in the Rambam. That he went ready and waiting to be Makabo Shabbos Kodesh. 
Remember coming into his house, Arab Rosh Hashanah, one year, and seeing him in towels and tefillin, sitting there, ruining, peaceful, Arab Rosh Hashanah. He was sitting there peacefully, davening, because he was prepared already. That was, that was him. That was the Shiva in his week. In his month, we spoke about, the guys spoke about the uh, Indian of giving Chaluka, how he was concerned. There was another aspect. She was, I was concerned that maybe the light needed their money today. And he made Mela every Rishchidish, every Rishchidish, on Rishchidish. He always made sure to give out the money and to make sure that the young light would get their money because he knew that everyone, maybe they're counting on it. How do I know? I can't hold up one day, even if it was difficult for him. But then when we come to the Shana, when we come to the Yud Beis Chaydesh, we come to the Yud Beis Chaydesh, we go through the year. We have to remember all the Nikudas of the Rishivas itself throughout the year. The stories about stories of how he was made through the year. And those stories have to live on by us. Just to stay over a fume. You have, I'm, I'm, I'm working forward. You have coming up Purim. The shoes of Sal was lived on Rechayv Amos. According to the Shita of Tukachinsky, Rechayv Amos is outside the Yerushalayim. And therefore, Priya Megillah, Priya Megillah needs to be done on Yudalit. Like a regular, like B'nai Brach, like any other city. Dafka in within the uh, close perimeter of the old city, that's where of Tukachinsky held that you would lay on Tesvav. Shuz Zetzal never told anyone privately, without anyone knowing, he would lay in the Megill on your dollar. Yes, it was a Chumrah, but no, not to know about it. His Chumras weren't there for a show. His Chumras were there because that was what he felt was necessary. There's a Shitar of Tukachinsky. We have to be Cheshish for it, but it's not for show. No one else had to know about it. And he got that from the Vizkarov. The Vizkarov did Chumras that he didn't tell anyone, not even the children did he tell them. Every evidence that was presented to him, there were people collecting the yeshiva for different avyanim. He would read all the signs in yeshiva about the different people collecting matanas avyanim, and he would call in each individual gabbai tzaka who is collecting money, and he would sit down with him and discuss with him, who are you collecting for, how much does he need, and he started making all sorts of cheshbonis, about giving money and whether the person is being made Yudal or Tesvav and Mimili had separate monies and everything was Gechezman and he had different pushkas of Matan Savyani money and Stop Stokka money and, and et cetera and so forth. And many years he gave out extra money to the Light and Yudalid and he Gechezman who he was giving it to to make sure that it, that everyone would be able to be a Habba Simcham on Purim. On Pesach, so, of course, we know all about the matzahs, how the Rishis himself was very involved in the matzahs. This came to mind about, everyone knows that there's a din, halacha, that you have to collect mayim shalonu, mayim, you have to collect mayim that was lawn in order to be used for the matzahs to make sure that it's not too hot for the matzahs, that the matzahs shouldn't have any chimum. It was in the year of Tov Shem Chet, in Minigin Yerushalayim, during the, those years in, 1940, in the 1940s and probably earlier, was to use maybar, to use water from wells. And that's not as as to use the mayim from a mayim, from a spring, to use spring water. But there weren't any springs in Yerushalayim, and around Yerushalayim was all Arabs. 1948, after the War of Independence, and they, they were able to move a little bit freer, so the Rishivas went looking for a spring. He went looking for a spring, and he went on the outskirts of Yerushalayim until he went to Moza, a place that's right on the outskirts of Yerushalayim, and he heard over there from different people that there's a spring there, and he walked through, and he said it was literally minefields, because there was the Arabs had left mines in different places. He had to be very careful where he was stepping. They shouldn't have to step on a mine. And he carefully and carefully went here and got reports of where the Mayan was, the spring was, till he found it, and he marked it, and that was the Mayan that he took, Mayan Shalanu for, for many, 50, 60 years afterwards, and the Bisguel gave him the job of collecting the Mayan Shalanu, and that was, he brought him, bringing him back to Yerushalayim, and many, many years, 
they, uh, they changed the situation by Motza. They changed the dynamics there. And he was afraid that the Mayan wasn't in the right place. And how is it he's going to come there to go draw the Mayan Shlomo? Maybe he won't find it that's proper. So he made us take a trip. We took a trip out to Motza a day before. And we looked at how the spring was going. And there were times when the spring wasn't going so well. And we had to work on redirecting. We brought some pipes. And we redirected the spring to be able to come out that they should be able to have Mayim Shlomo. This he did a day in advance. This I'm telling you is more recent years than when he was in his 80s. He, or even maybe closer to 90, he went out with us to Moza to go check out the Mayan to be able to make sure that he could still take water from Mayim Shlomo. He once met one of his nephews by the matzah baking itself. And he said, but what's this? You give by Mayim Shlomo. Why don't you come to Mayim Shlomo? So his nephew told him. There's plenty of people that you don't need me also. There's Shiva goes, and his brother went, and his brother won't win. What do you need me also? I'm just asking. So, so for a pasta mitzvah, you're missing a mitzvah. Rosh Hashim said, so even this hechshu mitzvah of taking my shalom was part of the mitzvah. It's all part of the preparation of the mitzvah. If you can be Isaac in it, what are you sending your shliach for? He can't himself. can't speak about the diktuk and the matzahs. They said to people, he, if, if, if I was supposed to pick him up at 7.30 to go to the matzah bakery, which is a five-minute drive, and matzahs weren't starting until after 8 o'clock, but he was told me he's leaving his house at 7.30, I knew if I got there after 7.15, he was on the street walking to the matzah bakery already. That, that, that was from the only times that she even that he made a time he meant earlier. Otherwise, a time was exactly a time. But there is, is, is chavivas to the mitzvah. It's chavivas to the mitzvah. And his, his, his daiga that he should be there on time, he's been there on time, caused him to go ahead and, may, and leave even earlier. He couldn't wait. He couldn't wait. And I just remember one time pulling up there at 7, 17 and seeing him walking down the street already. They had to drive close to him and pick him up in the car and take him. My son, I want to say something else. It's not the midas of the reshiva that I saw unbelievable in during, just happens to have to do with matzah baking, but it's not specific to matzah baking. The matzah baking in his chabura of the brothers and brother-in-laws started at 8 o'clock in the morning and went on to close 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Close to 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The way it worked was that they divided the matzahs. The first one run, uh, the first few runs of the matzahs went to Michael Feinstein's and so first, because he was the oldest, and then the next one ran to their shoes itself. And there was a whole list of how they went. And in the order of age, that's when you, it was your runs of matzahs. Well, the Maisa, there was many times your shoes itself came in the morning. He was there for Michael's matzahs and then his matzahs, and he was losing his energy. He needed to go home and to rest up. So he would tell me to take him home. Actually, there was someone else who had the job of just taking him from the matzah baking. I brought him to the matzah baking. That person's job was to take him from the matzah bakery home. That was his chazaka miyam and miyamima. So he always did that. I would call him and he would come, even though I was there. And the Rishim Zetzal would go home with him. Meantime, I had to go along in the car behind him to help watch the matzahs while they were bringing them in the house. They shouldn't be without Shmir even for one raga. And then he would tell me when he was done, he would tell me that come pick me up in an hour. I'm going to go lay down, I'm going to go rest, and then come pick me up in an hour. And the Rishim have to go back. They finished his matzahs already. Yeah, but people are going to say that I only care about my matzahs. I only care about my matzahs. I only stay by my matzahs. Even though Revelvel, the Zangazunt, the Kayoyim of the Yeshiva, his son would be there to take over for him. But people are going to say that I don't care about my brother's matzahs or my other family's brother's matzahs. I have to go back. And I would pick him up and he would go back to the matzah bakery. And stay here for another while to show everyone that he cared about it. Get him his matzahs also. Someone else's matzahs were, were just as chashitim as his own matzahs. So he ran out of energy and we took him home again. For several, several times we used to take paper from the matzah bakery home to help uh, uh, cover the matzah boxes as we were bringing them into the house. That nothing has to show him should get into the matzah boxes. They weren't sealed. We covered them with white sheets of paper. When we came home... So she had his own paper, which he stored up from years and years and years that he reused. No reason to throw it out. So he would lay out his paper and then put away the matzah boxes in exact fashion that he had his exact seder. And then when he was done, he would tell me to take the paper that we brought from the matzah bakery. Bring it back to the bakery. 
Because why should you take extra papers from the Chabur? Someone's got to pay for them. Now, I don't know about you, but those papers are not that expensive. Maybe a few pennies, as you would say, or a few are brought in there to throw. But his diktuk amomim, his diktuk amomim, his pachim ketanim, that's a, a something that we know very well, which brings me to mind, I'm going out of the order of the year, brings me to mind the story that happened when I made us, uh, when I gave my daughter, Rivka, her name, it was, it was a Reish Chedesh, a Thursday, by Kriya Satera, I gave her her name, most of my daughters gave it on Shabbos, that one I gave on Reish Chedesh in this house. But after the naming, I brought a plastic tablecloth and a Lachayim and some Mizaynas, which was my serve and everything, the banana liquor that he wanted, and we made a Lachayim, and he had a lot of Simcha, and he gave me brachas, and Baruch Hashem, when we were finishing, so I was, we were rolling up the plastic, the thin plastic tablecloth that I had spread over to make sure that his tablecloth didn't get dirty, we were rolling it up, he says, Cherik Nebus, we can still use it, the the the, 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 the single usage plastics, no, take it. The, uh, the dick took a moment. The dick took a moment. The Rishim's itself was unbelievable. And that came to his own money. That came to Yeshiva money. Everything was Eiske Cheshman. Once he had a Shiloh about, many times he had Shilohs about paying for the Yeshiva. So he paid from his own pocket. Paid for his own pocket. That that shouldn't come from the Yeshiva money. Moving on in the year, we have Kabbalah Satera. Like we said before, the Rishim was the, the penultimate Ebed Hashem. His Nasa, Kremlin, and Nishma, everything was there to be Mechabal, to be Mechabal. That, the Rebbeinah Shalom's Torah. Just to go on, Tishbov, Tishbov, the massive in the house on Tishbov, the Rishimah's Tishbov. You felt the Tzairah of the Shinto. You felt the Tzairah of the Rebbeinah Shalom that there was no base of Mikdash. I remember Krishna on Tishbov night by, 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 by Myriv took maybe 20 minutes. Because he was so nisragish, he was so nisragish, and he was thinking about our Kodesh Baruch Hu, and you saw from his Shmanesri where he cried, he cried at Tishbab. Tishbab was the day of Avilus, and we, we felt it, we felt it in the air. His his, his unbelievable ner- his nervousness on Tishbab, the tsar of the Shechina, that we felt, we felt tangibly in the air over Tishbab. Ben Azmanim was a separate parasha. Ben Azmanim in Al-Khadish Av. Ben Azmanim was also a time when the Rishima took care of certain things. Many times they had the schus of driving them up north to, to, to Meron, to Davin, to, to Tveria, to Davin Ramir Balnais. And he used to tell me that it's very hard for him to go to the Besak Forest and Svas because there's a lot of stairs. But when the Rebbeinson comes along, the Rebbeinson likes to Davin and Svas. So we're going to make a stop in Svas. So the times when the Rebbeinson came along with us, we made a special stop in Svas. So I remember one time when we made that stop in Svas, and unfortunately I didn't, it wasn't Mechavin before pre ways days, and I don't know if I even had a GPS, and I wasn't Mechavin exactly, and I ended up at the bottom, and the Rishim Zitzah walked all the stairs up to the cover of the Ariza, and then the cover of the Beis Yasin. Then he came back down, came back down, as he's on his way to the car, he meets one of his older Talmudim or Shank from Nebrak, and he says to them, he says to them as follows, When the gate suits to the Kevr of the Beis Yisif, when you go to the Kevr of the Mechaber of Shulchan Aruch, you chap of Pachad, you chap of Pachad. Why? Because God's call you so straight up like places. All of Kai is standing on his shoulders. The God Shulchan Aruch, that's what we live by. This is, this is what the I was thinking about the cavern of the Beis Yasef, the godless of the Beis Yasef in Shulchan Aruch, and how he put out the Shulchan Aruch for Kal Yisrael. Can't be my rich too much longer. I don't know. I'm over my stay in my boundaries. But there's so El, you made Shuva. Shuva every day in El was Eiske Cheshman. Every day in El was another day closer. So tell me that in the house of the Briskarov, in his father's house, the closer it got to the Yemei Adin of Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, the closer it got to them, how much you couldn't even smile. It was thick in the air. The pachat of the Yemei Adin was thick, was tangible. You could feel it. And therefore, he says, you probably couldn't eke out a smile during the Yemei Adin. They felt it. I want to say about Kiyah Schaefer. 
Rizkarov and Rav Chaim had a certain effort of doing Shvarim. With all the Chumas of Beis Bris, Lemaise, because of the fact that that was the way his father had Kia Shafer, that's the only way he heard Shafer. He might have heard it three times. He might have had other people blowing from his house, but he never blew a different type of Shvarim. And that was because, like we said, Chumras are Chumras, but there are boundaries. And if that's the way that Rizkarov and the Rav Chaim held, that's the way he did. I'll leave off with one story. Two stories. One about Sukkis. Viskarov suffered from asthma and could not sleep in the sukkah. The, the Rishizetzal had the schus of sleeping with the Viskarov in the same room. His older brother, Rivero, did not sleep in that room. And he was Mishar's father in the middle of the night. The Maizu, the Rav told him, the Viskarov told him, because there's Allah, you're Mishamish me and I'm a Chayla, I can't sleep in the sukkah, you don't need to sleep in the sukkah. And the Rishizetzal, and I heard it in his voice, how much, yes, he was Mekai in the mitzvah, but it pained him all those years that he wasn't Zeichet to sleep in the sukkah. But the Maisa, the Seif Yomov, every single year he was Zeichet to sleep in the sukkah, out of Seif Yomov till the last sukkah. Sukkah's tough shim pay olive, he still slept in the sukkah. He was sleeping in a hospital bed, but we brought another hospital bed into the sukkah, and he slept in the sukkah with his aides. There he slept. Rabbi Shalom paid him back for all of his years of kibbutz of that he was Marich Yom and Malkulam to be able to rekai in the midst of Sukkah B'Yidura, even to save Yom of, even at great difficulty. And last but a uh, with Hanukkah. I remember once we were walking back from the and the Rishi would run to Hanukkah to be able to, to light exactly by the Shkiel. To light exactly by the Shkiel. A mitzvah the Rabbanan with many, many Paiskim holding today. That in the Shkia is lechachilo, but you could be mekayim the mitzvah from Shkia till at least says at bechavin. And one of my chavrusas went over to ask him a shiloh that he lives in Kiryat Sefer, and if he doesn't leave the shir early, then he's not going to make it home in time to life by the Shkia and Kiryat Sefer. I remember thinking to myself by the Rishiva shir is kodesh kadoshim, shir is mamish the gods and the mesira satera. That was shir. The shir was kodesh kadoshim to leave, have a town of leaving the shir early. But he said, no, I can't tell you to do that. A dip took in a mitzvah the Rabbanan to light exactly at the Shkia that you have to miss the Shia. Thus is Torah. Torah is Luman of Nas Lasses. Let us conclude that these are some Dibri card that we said about the Rashiva, some memories that we have, some Limudim that we're able to take out. Each and every one of us can take out the lessons that he's able to accomplish to live by the Rashivas themselves. And, dictates and his lessons that he left for us. And then the tzaddikim b'misosim kuyim chayim. Tzaddikim e'la manucha lo'i b'olam hazim v'lo'i b'olam habo. I'll leave you with the zug from the Rishim Sassai. He used to tell me, Sherek, I finished the kind of tzaddik with the e'la manucha hobbit. E'la manucha lo'i b'olam hazim v'olam habo. He used to tell him back, yeah, but when you're e'la manucha lo'i b'olam hazim v'olam habo, because you're worried about everyone else, you're worried about the tamim, you're worried about everyone, then... You're a that's very tzaddik. That's how you become a tzaddik. So we have tzaddik and elam manucha loy boilum hazem loy boilum haba. Let's hope his zikaron will continue on and be able to be mila bekaidish through shushik up and his mila shizuk rivaro kein ashik through b'tzarachayim and we should be zayka together to go be mekabel with name Mashiach Tzikenu and then we'll greet the Rishiva and all of us as Talmidim will be able to greet the Rishiva the mayor of Yemen.